Hi, I'm Andy Davis, and this is Lauren McGough. This month on Onlyville USA, we did an interview with Holy Sheet. And they wore masks. And we sat down with artist Jerry Figueroa. Oh, and you just had this installation with Bert Cranko. And later, we'll show you some live footage we shot at the Funky Jungle. But first, here is a clip from Dave Fisher's upcoming movie, Do Not Peer Into Void. And now, on Onlyville USA, Holy Sheet, Jerry Figueroa, and the Funky Jungle. I'm Dustin T. Rooney. I am Adam Edmar Souza. And, and we're, we're Holy Sheet. This is Derek Greenhorn. And we also have Mariel Partridge. Hello. Very excited about this interview. They're going to play some music for us. Very excited about that. But before we get to the musical numbers, we're just going to shoot the the sheet. Shoot the sheet. We're going to shoot the sheet with holy sheet. Tell us a little bit about yourselves. My name is Derek Santos, and I'm a virgin and a suicide. You know my name, and I'm not a ghost. I'm just a biological phenomenon. Yeah. Uh, when I was a kid, my uh, brother's friend threw a yo-yo at a squirrel and, uh, and injured it. And then he told me to uh, grab this tent pole and stab it to death. And uh, I did it. And then that's when I decided that we should, that we should start a band. And so we just we moved to Providence and then started playing in churches and, uh, and that's how we got started. And then we were on American Idol and we all know how that went. Now we're famous. Now we're on this show and this is the best show uh, out there. This is the only show that will let us on their show. So that's, you know. they said that you had a lot to say about the Zodiac. I'm not sure if I believe them. Is this true? The Zodiac Killer. Yeah. The the murderer. Yeah, my parents. Uh, were they murdered by him? No, they were in the same uh, cult in Peru. They shared a dog together. Fantastic. You shared a, your parents shared a dog with a murderer. Yeah, yeah. When was this around? In uh, 67. The dog's definitely dead then. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah he's been dead for a long time. But. <laughs> awesome. Uh, you've, been, you've been playing at a uh, comedy connection. Yeah, I just do a... A comedy routine, I tap dance. And they love it? Yeah, I mean, not pr probably. They just say that they do it to my face. But. I, um, I knew. I heard that um, you're not only not influenced by the Beatles, but, but something more. We're we waiting for uh, Paul McCartney to die. Me too. George was the only good Beatle. Yeah. And that's, <clears throat> you know, for a child molester, I mean. Yeah. I think he married his sister, too. I heard that he married his sister. It's close enough. Yeah. Sort of get out the kiddie pools. Here comes yeah. some flipper babies. Yeah. Oh. Awesome. Congratulations, Paul McCartney. Where's Ringo in all this? Is he still voice acting the um, Animaniacs or what? He was on that show? Oh, yeah. He was wacko. That's not true. It's totally true. Think about it. Music, though. I mean... Yeah. Music, yes or no? No. What do you think, baby? No. No. You have a television show. I saw it today, first time ever. Make Believe World of Make Believe. Mm -hmm. It's brilliant. Um, <clears throat> tell me about that. Um, it's a half hour show. 
That's for, for children. For children. On public access. There's some puppets. And there's some puppets and... Mm -hmm. uh, or are they puppets? You know, it's, yeah. a, it's hard to say. Characters. Yeah, we love if you would come on the show sometime. Yeah, we'd love to come on the show. Yeah. I would love to be just part of that show, even if it's yeah. just the janitor. Man, I'll do it. It's easy to find. Yeah. You know, just, we're, we're, just, just, I just ask Jeeves. Ask Jeeves. Make believe world of make believe. Yeah. And then he tell Jeeves tells me, yeah. let's yeah, I'm gonna let's do that. It's like the type of show that would be playing in heaven. You know, if you went to heaven, just what would be on the, the screen, it would just be that show. That's half true. I heard you guys just got back from space. Um, like, you went really far out there, right? Um, yeah. Did you visit any planets with life on them? Uh, Saturn. Saturn had life. Sk Skittles. Yeah, Skittles. Yeah, Saturn, Skittles. Saturn had Skittles. Yeah. No, I, I've heard of them. They experience they're pro-life. They're pro-life? Yeah, they're pro-life. So that was a little boring. Yeah. 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 They don't believe in abortion on Saturn. I heard it got very exciting. That's um, why I got Frasier. Yeah. Brandon. Right. But apparently when you have sex on Saturn, um, you're still a virgin and the baby replaces your hand. It might make masturbation a little difficult. Without, you know what I mean? Because it's like half masturbation, half incest. Yeah. I think. I think it's more natural personally. How do you feel? Mm. I would like to play this game on the bus where you just touch someone's knee like that. I like that game. Yeah. <laughs> my cat got sick the other day and I had to take him to the vet and it was really convenient because he was outside my building. Um, I hate to cut this interview short but I really, really want to hear uh, you guys play. Um, you like playing a couple songs? Playing some music? Sure.
Thanks, Pete. Possibly one of the finest American artists of our day, still living at a mere 20 years of age, Jerry Figueroa. Thank you for being on the show. Thank you very much, Dusty. Um, so what, how'd you get into art? I mean, I know um, you're so young, but when, when did you first get into it? Oh, I know it sounds kind of cheesy, but I was in kindergarten. I was going to school and learning about numbers and junk. Okay, yeah. She was reading the stories and all these words she's saying, I'm like, I'm thinking to myself, I can put that on paper in my own version. I, maybe I can put this on this thing here. Picked it up and instead of talking about the cow going over the moon, so I made my own little, you know, shitty cartoon thing of a cow and one of the spoon and one of a fork. And then I was like, this is pretty cool. The lady, she told me stuff and I put it on paper. It was just like, that's the initial rooting of why I just loved to do anything childlike. Basically, I just always kept it with me. You know, when I was doing the art classes, I wasn't just fucking around. That was my, that was my, like, unleashing. The one part of the school day a week, I could just, like, know what the hell I'm doing. This is Jerry and art, a match made in heaven. Yeah, definitely. How would you describe the artwork, like, conceptually, verbally? It's a difficult one. Uh, maybe, uh, passion eccentric and wholesome. Let's get some of that on the screen right now. American artist. Jerry Figaro on the show on Onlyville USA. Was there an artist that sort of spoke to you? Uh, like kind of like, or just really grabbed my attention? Like a, I'll, I'll be I'll be honest. When I started watching cartoons as a kid, I don't know all that Cartoon Network roster and old Hanna Barbera cartoons. You know those '90s slimy garbage cartoons that Ren and Stimpy and all that stuff. I love that stuff. Beavis and Butthead. I was like four years old watching Beavis and Butthead and just laughing my little keister off. And it was just, that was like the initial inspiration to like, I saw how roughly they were getting it out. I mean, I would always have a notepad and I would just draw the cartoons as I was watching them and like copy these figures and shapes and, make, and put them in front of me so I could kind of look at it later when they were not given that certain show. So, Jerry, how old were you when you realized that cartoons weren't real? They're forever real, you know? They're like, every time there's a new one, it's a new friend. New, uh, you know, depends on some, some of the friends suck, so you don't watch them, you don't talk to them. Yeah. For me, Spongebob was like that really annoying friend who showed up everywhere for like 10 years. Well, he was that kind of spastic dude that I knew was doing drugs behind my back. And it looks, uh, ghetto as fuck. Yeah. <laughs> hey dude, we like- Brian, first word that pops in your head. Dude, that's a tough question, man. Yes. <laughs> one dollar! One television in Sydney, how you doing? Because I like this one better. I like this one better. That's Jerry. Did you know he's, he's a genius. He's ready for a post. We're gonna show his body! We're getting married! <laughs> it's whatever, you know, it's, it's fine. I'm over it. I need a beer. That's shoulder off the side. Uh, the fourth season of Breaking Bad. <laughs> All right, call in today and make sure that
I'd say the 4th of July is my favorite holiday. Last 4th of July, um, I watched the fireworks from the water and uh, we paddled out there under the fireworks. It was really good because in the uh, rubber raft, when the explosions were going on, you could really feel the like air compression because the whole raft would kind of go. Barbecues in the parking lot, you know? I love skateboards, I love rockets, I love surfboards, I like snowboards, I like wooden boards. So that's what I think of when I think of America. I like the American flag. I've never left America, so, and I've had a lot of good things happen, so that's a tough one. My best 4th of July was seeing Connor Roberts live in Battery Park. I just went to see Radiohead two weeks ago. My favorite thing about America is how big it is and that there's many different regions that are different. When I look up at the sky, I'm satisfied with the clouds we have over here. You know, Montana is the big sky state. I like the sky in America. Um, I love the 4th of July. 